So I'm going to spend um, I'm going to spend probably more time um, talking about the NIACs um, menus of adaptation strategies and approaches, um, partly because you know that's what I'm most familiar with. That's what I feel the most confident talking about. Um, but also, I think a lot of what I can say about these um, menus of adaptation strategies and approaches are also true of some of the other resources um, that that. I've got here on the slide um, that we'll, we'll spend a little time going through. Um, but I also just want to say that, um, you know, this, these probably aren't everything that's out there that's appropriate for, for Southern New England. And so if folks have um, other resources that they're aware of, um, it would be great to, you know, share it with the broader group. Um, we can put that listserv into practice. And, and start you know, sending out some links to other things as well. Okay, so um, if you visit the Climate Change Response Framework website, which we've got the URL up here at forestadaptation.org, um, you'll be able to see the different focus areas um, for which there are published menus for adaptation strategies and approaches um, that, that our group at, at the, um, Northern Institute of Applied Climate Science have developed. <clears throat> and so these menus of adaptation strategies and approaches were designed to be used with the five-step adaptation planning process that we call the adaptation workbook. Um, a lot of you are probably familiar with this um, and as described in this document, uh, the forest adaptation resources that I'm showing here. Um, and so it's important to recognize that, you know, these aren't uh, recommendations about how people should respond, but um, it's more like a set of key questions and, and a thought process to go through um, that's really flexible and, and can lead to customized actions uh, for climate adaptation. Um, so the workbook process can be thought of as providing a structured flexibility. Um, there's five steps which we've really um, briefly summarized here in the slide that kind of break up the process of identifying adaptation actions into bite-sized pieces and kind of step people through a structured, um, logical, adaptive management process. Um, so that's the structured part is you've got these five steps here. Um, the process provides opportunities for people to kind of be creative, um, identifying win-win opportunities as well as kind of generating new ideas on adaptation and as they go through the process um, they're not you know being directed or guided in any way um, and so that's really where the that kind of flexibility part comes in um, we, we are going to have time at the end for questions but if people have any questions that pop up you know just just jump on in, unmute yourself, or um, you know we can use the chat box as well. So, um, Maria or, or Melissa, um, if you can point out if there's any um, questions that pop up in the chat box. Um, okay, so the adaptation process, you know, is is really driven by what are the individual goals, what are the force conditions. Um, you know, site characteristics of, of a particular place and project. Um, and so that's kind of where the process begins in that step one. And then people consider the climate change impacts that are important to their specific site that they're managing. Um, in step three, they evaluate kind of what are the challenges and opportunities posed by climate change for, for reaching their management objectives. And then in step four, after they, they've kind of identified all of that, um, that's where um, people use these menus of adaptation strategies and approaches. So that's where the menus kind of plug into the process to, to help them identify kind of responses um, that, that address those key challenges and opportunities. And then finally, um, the important piece of, of monitoring to figure out if, if what we're doing on the ground is, is actually helping us to meet our, our management objectives. <clears throat> okay, so the adaptation menus are kind of set up like a menu at a restaurant, 
right? You've got these big categories, things like brunch or pasta or cocktails. And then um, within each category, you've got the more specific items that you, you actually would order on the menu. Um, and so the adaptation menus are organized similar to this in a, in a kind of hierarchical fashion. <clears throat> and, and I'm going to walk you through an example of that in a, in a few minutes, just so you can kind of see what I'm talking about with that hierarchical fashion. Um, but it's important to note that, that these are really intended to be thorough, comprehensive lists of what you can do, which means they're probably going to be things that are opposed to one another. You know, you're not going to necessarily order the squid ink fettuccine and French toast at the same time. Uh, right. And so there are things that you're just, they don't go together. Um, and, and there's probably things that you would just look at a menu and you'd say, well, I'd never do that. I, I'd never implement that practice on my forest. Um, there's no way I'm ever going to order squid ink fettuccine, no matter how good you say it is. So, um, so it, it's intended to kind of provide all the various options and, and then use, um, leave it to the user to select what's appropriate. Um, for their site. <clears throat> so I guess there kind of say four general things about uh, the menus of strategies and approaches for adaptation. And, and again, I, I think a lot of this um, applies to some of those other resources that compile adaptation um, approaches as well. That um, this isn't a list that's specific necessarily to our menus. Um, and, and so these fourth ideas are, you know, that they connect broad ideas to specific actions um, and they create a clear rationale for those actions by connecting them to kind of broader adaptation concepts. <clears throat> um, and so people will oftentimes, you know, ask what success looks like. And so you know, the menu helps to explicitly identify what the intent of your adaptation actions are um, and, and, and by doing so kind of define what success looks like. And, and then also by doing so also helps you communicate your ideas. Um, and, and, and so also because these are comprehensive, then these menus can really help generate sort of creative solutions for, um, for some of the um, risks posed by climate change. <clears throat> okay, so here's that example of kind of the hierarchical organization and, and an example of kind of how you would step through the process of using, uh, using a menu. So um, for this example, let's um, kind of consider the, the example of, um, of adaptation of specific type of forest system, such as um, a forested peatland, for example. And so in this, in this case, you know, you, you're interested in adaptation, you're concerned about the climate change impacts on, um, on a forested wetland. And, you know, the, the really the thing that you want to do in this example is you want to prevent change from happening. You want to resist climate uh, impacts um, and changes to your system. So that's kind of the big picture, that, that overarching goal or intent of your adaptation. And so using the menu, you would first look at these, these strategies. And um, one strategy that might stand out to you in this case would be sustaining fundamental ecological functions. Underneath that particular strategy, um, you might identify maintaining and restoring hydrology as a particularly important approach given, you know, the, the importance of, of hydrology to, to peatland. Um, <clears throat> and so at this point, you know, this is kind of where the menu ends and you need to then, as the user of the menu, identify the, the actual tactic, the specific on the ground action that you would implement. To, to do this approach of maintaining and storing or restoring hydrology. And so you might identify the importance of installing water control structures at road crossings uh, to maintain uh, peatland water levels. Um, and so here's an example then, you know, where, where using the menu kind of helps you step down from the big idea down to the, to the specific on the ground adaptation action. <clears throat> Um, and so 
you know, by explicitly connecting these ideas and whether it's uh, resistance to, to changes or resilience, um, enhancing the resilience of the system or, or even thinking about, uh, you know, maybe transitioning the system to something that looks different, um, we connect them to those specific adaptation approaches um, and, and tactics that, that really identify kind of what the intent is. So, so it's really this kind of reciprocal relationship between those, those the big picture and, and the specific, um, and that really identifies the intent of, of what you're trying to do. Um, also going through this logical thought process really helps us to communicate what our ideas are and our plans are, um, not only to, to our colleagues or to our supervisors, um, but also to the public. <clears throat> um, so, you know, really getting at that communication piece, which we know is, it, it can be a challenge, um, but it's, it's important in almost everything that we, we do in our day-to-day -day work. Um, and so, um, kind of going through this process um, helps you to kind of set up the narrative for describing um, what specifically we're doing, where we're doing it, um, and, and the why. You know, what are we trying to achieve um, by doing these specific actions? <clears throat> okay. And, and then, of course, um, having having examples having case studies are really important for for communicating those ideas um, through the work of the climate change response framework you know our group has developed numerous um, demonstration projects that that kind of help to to um, kind of serve as examples so people can understand that that process and and those connections between the big picture and the and the on the ground ideas um, or on the, on the ground act actions um, to, to really get across that intentionality. Um, and so you can see there's a, a quite a few projects in the Southern New England region. This map doesn't have everything on it. Um, I forgot to uh, put the link up, but on that forest adaptation uh, website, you can go and you can look at uh, a number of these demonstration areas and you can kind of filter them depending upon um, different land ownership types as, as well as different types of impacts or resources. <clears throat> um, and finally, using the menu really forces people to consider ideas or options that they might not have originally considered. Um, and so really boosts, I think, the, the creativity that people come to the adaptation process with. Um, often people approach problems, you know, with solutions that they're comfortable with, um, with things that they've used in the past or that they've had previous success with. And so when you're looking at a menu or you're looking at one of these other resources that compiles different adaptation approaches, um, it can really help people think outside of the box and consider things you know, that they hadn't thought about previously. And, and even if you kind of do that consideration and say, no, that's not right for, for this project, that's not right for how we manage our forests, um, just going through that process, I think, opens up um, your, your, you know, your thought process to, to considering doing things maybe a little bit differently or saying, well, if this thing happens in the future, then maybe we would do something a little bit different. Um, and so, you know, I think this is one of the, maybe one of the, the, um, the, the benefits of these resources that I don't think gets enough uh, credit um, when people kind of think about the importance of these resources out there. <clears throat> okay, so our group has developed a number of menus of adaptation strategies and approaches. Um, we started out originally with the forestry menu. Um, added urban forestry. Maria worked with the, the Northeast Cli um, Climate Hub to develop the agriculture menu. Um, and then mo most recently, um, <clears throat> Danielle Shannon and our group um, led the development of the forested watershed menu for people thinking about water, water quality and water quantity. Um, and then um, we're very proud of, of the work that our group 
um, did with some of the tribal organizations um, in the lake states to, um, and it was, this was really those, those tribal organizations that led the development of a, of a tribal perspectives menu. Um, so we've got a number of menus that are published and then you can see on the right hand side we've got a number that are sort of in various stages of, of development. So we've got a forest carbon management uh, menu um, that's in review right now, uh, recreation, wildlife menu, um, and a lot of these you can find draft versions of the menus at the URL that's at the bottom there. Um, a lot of these are, even though they're not published yet, you know, they're, they're available and we've been working with managers to use them to kind of vet them and, and improve them. Um, and so, um, yeah, we're, we're really, you know, excited about kind of expanding our offering of, of menus. Um, Okay, so so that's kind of the 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 NIAX, um, take on adaptation strategies and approaches. Um, but there's others that are out there. Um, this Mass Wildlife Climate Action Tool is an excellent resource. Um, I really am impressed with with the work that went into this and and. Um, and you know, given the, the regional focus of this, I think it's, it's particularly, I think an important resource for this group. Um, so I'm not as familiar with this, um, but I can kind of just do a really brief kind of stepping through how to, how to use this resource. Um, and there's a great tutorial on the site as well. So, so folks you know, can go and go to that climateactiontool.org and, and kind of explore it for yourself. But um, if you look, You've kind of got two options there. Option one is to explore by steps, and option two is to explore by topic. Um, if you click on the the action tab on the on the explore by steps, you'll come to this page that kind of lists all of the different adaptation strategies and actions. And then on the left hand side, you can sort of filter that list to, depending upon. Um, the town where you're located or the watershed that you're working in. You can also filter that list by adaptation um, type. And so, you know, you can see on the screen here that you can, you can filter this by coastal management or restoration, or if you're interested in, in outreach. Um, and so that will kind of, kind of filter the list for you. Um, the other option is to explore by topic, that option two below it. And um, the second one on the list on the left hand side is forest resources. If you click on that, um, you've got this page that comes up and you can see that there's a number of forest habitat types that are, that are listed there. And if you click on those, then there'll be a number of adaptation strategies and approaches that, um, that come up appropriate to that habitat type. Um, Okay, so um, one other tool that, that our group has been involved in and developing is this uh, compendium of adaptation approaches. This is hosted on the Climate Change Resource Center website. Um, and, and this is uh, kind, of, kind of like that, the, the, um, the Mass Wildlife Climate Tool, um, one that is sort of a compilation and and allows you to sort of filter your results um, based off of uh, a number of different inputs to it. You can see sort of on the on the bottom, find your approaches for your project. You can you can highlight different resource areas, um, different climate change impacts that you might be uh, interested in, and um, this is uh, ideally intended to cover um, the entire US. Um, in reality, it's kind of pulling, you know, from where there are resources developed for, so really kind of focuses on the, on the Eastern region um, where, where our group works, as well as um, some areas in the West um, where the adaptation partners um, based in the Pacific Northwest have been working. And so, you know, you can, here's just an example of putting in non-forested vegetation in the resource area, then your, your results, you get a number of, of different adaptation approaches 
um, that are applicable to to whatever you know inputs that you, you put in to to kind of search this um, and so this is a, a another good one to kind of just explore um, and 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 like the mass wildlife climate action tool um, is going to hopefully be something that continues to get updated as more resources um, and, and more geographies you know get get developed and then the last one that i'll just really briefly go through is is there is a canadian database for adaptation options um, this is one that i i really have spent very little time exploring um, but just given you know the that there's um, enough similarities and and forest type um, in in the New England region and and in eastern Canada some of this information is is probably appropriate you can kind of similarly uh, kind of explore things depending upon you know uh, sort of vulnerability types um, and also sort of the different um, what they call target areas for adaptation that's sort of like you know enhancing adaptive capacity or um, this example here you can see there's reducing sensitivity or reducing stressors so those are basically kind of the three um, target areas for adaptation as sort of how are you how are you how are you addressing um, the risks of climate um, and so this is just a, another resource to explore so um, I'll leave it at that.